What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Attacker Productions. Today, I bankrupt, as you can see, be joined by Jake. What's going on, y'all? And we may get a Jimmy later. We're not really sure. He has company. We'll see what happens if they leave or not. But if not, it's just be us two for the rest of the evening, which is fine. Um, today, this week was a little bit rough. Um, Thanksgiving was a thing. So if you celebrate the holidays, yay. If you don't, yay. Um... I, I prefer to be in second category, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, so I didn't really get a chance to get a lot of stuff done as I wanted to. So we only did like three videos last week, and we got very limited videos this week, mainly because of Black Friday. Um, Locals was very busy with doing sales, and we didn't really have room. We did get a couple games recorded over at Jimmy's Place, which is very low lit, which is awesome. Hopefully I can use this footage. Um, we have Magenta versus SS4 Gogeta. And we have Magenta versus um, Three Han, Gohan, whatever you guys want to call it, Three Energy Gohan. There's a name no, for it. Blue Gohan. And we have, we'll have a deck profile for those of your mecha fans. Uh, Jimmy has revamped the mecha deck, and hopefully we maybe get some um, gameplay of it down the road. Then I'll go to the locals a little bit early one weekend and record something ahead of time. And I hope I'll get the Magenta deck profile. And if we need more content, I'm sure Drake will join me on some untap, which I rarely do but i'll i'll do it if we need to we could squeeze in an extra deck profile or something too i've got a couple things in the tank speaking of which have you worked on e oh there's buttons click them they're there for a reason let's get in today's video have you actually started building with a new set yet yeah i've been uh experimenting a lot with both of the blue decks in this set and while Gohan seems to be the more just powerful and aggressive deck out of the gate, I think Blue Gotenks, uh, the Goten and Trunks leader, the SH leader, um, I, I think has a lot of hidden potential. It's got a lot of synergy with cards that are intended for the other archetype. And um, the... I think the big fusion Gotenks is is more of a bait. I think you you play like a low amount of copies of that card in your deck if you play it at all, and you focus more on comboing and drawing cards like Red Gogeta did, and then attacking multiple times with your leader and using your leader's effect to restand, because both of your leader effects uh, aren't once per turn. So the first swing you'll be a twenty k and you'll draw a card. And then if you use the leader effect, the second swing, you'll be a 25k and you'll draw a card. Which can be pretty strong because leader swings can be kind of iffy to interact with. Yeah. I know I'm going to work on either one of the red decks this weekend. Not really sure which one's going to be. So we'll see what happens there. And like I said, I'll get the Magenta profile out this week. I'm really didn't get a chance to touch it at all. So we'll see what happens. In the world of Dragon Ball... We had a few things kind of change. We had a role update, I think it was, when it comes to the final turn now when it come, when, uh, at events when the time is called. And if you're in a battle, you end that battle. Like, like the battle continues yeah. to the end point, which I think is fantastic. It actually it's what lost Jimmy a game at um, TCG Con. Because he was in mid swing, time was called, and because of that, he they just had to end it right there and then, and yeah. he lost because of that. So I mean, I, I've lost games the same way in untap or not untap in webcam events like webcam regionals, and I mean, this has led to players getting banned in the past because it creates kind of a feels bad situation and. I know we personally on this channel, if you go back, have been making this recommendation for maybe a year here and there just throughout videos where it just makes more sense to let combat end. And if that changes who the winner of the game would be, then that's probably who should win the game. In, in situations like that, because they go down to like the final three turns, you're, depending on what phase of those three, yeah, because you're in those three turns... And then it's like, I can't remember if there's, there's an additional time called after, so I can't remember exactly how all it worked so, out to be, but yeah, go on. I think it's, nowadays it's three, like one, two, three, or zero, one, two, however you want to put it, 
Um, they used to do five additional minutes, and it used to like vary right. on yeah. the it used to vary on the event whether they went to turns or five additional minutes or some combination of both. And then after that, the game went to calculating well which player has more life, which player has more battle cards in play. Some decks take their own life as a function of how their leader works. Some decks don't play very many battle cards. So it wasn't the best system of determining who's actually like ahead in a game when when players are out of time. And I think overall this decision is just going to be really good for the game, and it, it just makes a lot of intuitive sense. Other news, they dropped a card for next set. Jake, did you see that by chance? The Coomber? Yes. I'm yeah, that was going around in our text group. I'm super excited about this one. Dual attack, when this card plays just one of your opponent's battle cards, it gains Servant until the end of your opponent's next turn. Active main, one black energy. If your leader's black and your opponent has two or more energy and a black battle card in play, you play this card for your hand. I mean, initially what that creates is a an negate for your next turn. Also, it's a you play this card, you target obviously a card in rest mode, so that way they can't restand that card and now they don't benefit from that card's attack. You don't have to worry about wasting resources into killing that card right away. I think it's amazing, and I absolutely love it, and I'm looking forward to playing Cooper. Yeah, depending on how potent like your opponent's cards are with subsequent attacks, locking them down for a single turn with Servant could just be huge. It reminds me a lot of... I think, there, I think it's called Frost Titan in Magic the Gathering. When Whenever it attacks, you pick two of your opponent's creatures that are tapped, and, and they don't untap on your opponent's uh, untap step. So it kind of freezes them over for a turn. And this, this card reminds me a lot of that. It's a big body, like a six drop. I think Frost Titan is a six drop as well. Like They're very similar cards, and I'm interested to see how well it does in Dragon Ball. So, we're like coming to the end of a year of Dragon Ball there really there's no more product releases this year to my knowledge I mean people are probably <laughs> still waiting on their yep. anniversary boxes to come in yep but uh, then there's nothing else to buy um, if you're done with fighters ambition because we had we had the gift holiday boxes which came out mm -hmm. um yeah so we won't get new stuff until the beginning of next year I think I think January is when we get stuff in it's either January it's fe early February so as far as new cards go, 2022 is in the books. Like, how do you feel about the year overall as far as, like, quality of the game and things like that? I, I think, personally, it's good. I like the changes that we've done. I love, I love the new archetype, the new format we're in. We we talked about before, like, in uh, in past matches, depending on what the thing is, like, there's certain situations where it's like, you feel like you have no resources, you have no things like this. Um, I'm stuck with a shit hand. I'm just can't. I can't do anything here. Zenkai gives the ability to give you another hand. Um, I love the decks that we got in where they've added. Like when we had King Col uh, Red King Piccolo, it's like, oh, your life is an extra hand. And then kind of like the Gohan deck, of like SS2 Gohan from like set 13 or 14, it was like your energy is like another way resource for you to play off cards. I, yeah. I, I love the introducing adding more and more to that, like the new Broly. You're adding cards to underneath your leader or other Broly cards, which initially thins the deck out, and you can still play those extra cards as if they were in your hand, which is fantastic. So, like, in case that deck goes up against, like, say, Magenta, and then Magenta is really well of eliminating the cards in their hand, they still have that extra pool of cards still there, which aren't in their hands. So I like the interaction between those two games. Uh, without giving anything away, when um, it's me and Jimmy playing on the uh, Magenta versus Gohan. And there's a point where, like, because of the way the deck interacts, I got Jimmy down to, like, zero to one card hand, but because of the leader's ability, he's able to get more cards back, so he's able to retain resources. And I like that, the interaction between the decks. I love the idea of where it does feel like, through everything they've brought out, they've involved their ideas and made them better with each iter iter um, iteration? iteration of them, yes. Because like we we seen hand control decks where it's like that's disgusting. Like we can't do anything about that. Um, I'll tell you just real quick on that on that note. I love the new. Uh, I think it's the heroic uh, yellow gamma card that basically you 
play it, and then during your opponent's next turn, every time they activate Villainous, you draw a card. Yeah. So it's just, uh, they really fine-tuned kind of like a silver bullet for that, and it's low impact because it's not in your main deck, which is awesome. What, and great, it is a yellow energy, so you're going to be using a yellow decks if you're using it outside of it, but I definitely think it's a good sideboard because you can side in uh, Z deck cards. So Really? Yeah. I was not aware of that. If I recall correctly, um, your sideboard can incorporate... Um, Z deck cards, and you just kind of change those out separately. The problem is that when we our first set, there was an initial reason to have Z decks in your sideboard. So I really do think it'd be a good idea, like the yellow deck, maybe just like have one gamma in your sideboard if that's still a thing. And then when you play against Magenta, you just side one of those into your Z deck, and that way, um, when you feel like your opponent's in a comfortable spot where they're gonna start kind of spamming, you just kind of play it, crack it, and get the effect release one turn, or at least stop your opponent, potentially from... I mean, if you can't control the board, you might be losing, like, potentially three cards. Like, I had a game, I think last week, I don't remember if it was on camera or not, but my opponent couldn't clear my board, and I made them, like, discard three and four cards back-to-back, pretty much. Oof. Yeah. So, I mean, it's at least something. Yes. Taking a quick shift, because, like I said, we, we really just do this to more or less shoot the shit, have fun, hang out, and hopefully you guys enjoy that as well. Um, I want to put a thank you out there. Someone actually used the uh, affiliation link down below, and I think it was pretty cool. Um, so if you haven't checked out yet already, what not, it's a thing we do. We have affiliation link with. All you got to do is click the link, sign up for an account, make your first purchase, get $15 off first purchase, and Pokemon. We're both playing it. We kind of touched base on it a little bit last week. Uh, I'm finally done doing all of the trades going back and forth between all the copies. So now I'm able to yeah. play the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for the Gengar, by the way. Not a problem. Um, absolutely enjoying it. I was talking about earlier with um, Nick and Austin. I think Jake had joined in by that point. <clears throat> I like playing it. I like fighting against every trainer. And in all the other Pokemon games, there was kind of like a more or less direct route where you see all the trainers and they will kind of um, move towards you and they spot you and whatnot. They don't do this in this game, and that actually frustrates the crap out of me because I like just beating everything, everyone as soon as possible, and qu- pretty much that's what I'm just grinding or super early on. That way, I don't have to worry about late on the road because I know like Fluff was playing, and he said he had told me that he, I guess he skipped the gym by accident. And granted, the gyms are in no particular order; like you can go left yeah. or right, go where you want. I think it's fantastic. But he went to a, a place that had a gym, and he's like, there were ten levels higher than him, and I'm like, yo, that's that's awesome. And I haven't gone to my first gym. I haven't done any of the uh, star star, star team, bases star bases yet. I haven't done any of the Titans yet. And I'm already running around with a squad of like 25 already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably time to start doing that stuff because a lot of that stuff is for like 15 yeah. to like 20. And you're just going to like start bowling over things. It, the, the thing, though, is that when I get to a grindy... Like when I play Final Fantasy games, I do this a lot too. If I get into a place where there's a ton of exploration, I will go everywhere I possibly can. I will collect everything. I will catch everything I possibly can before I leave that area. And I'm already on box three on filling up my stuff. <laughs> and I do have a couple duplicates, mainly due to um, the Terra Pokemon. And I think it's a great idea because Terra's technically have that authority that third attribute, second or third attribute that won't be normally part of them. I'm thinking, you know, I'm just going to collect as many of these I possibly can. And I know later tonight when I got, when we had done recording this, I'm going to start doing all the EV ones or at least tomorrow morning. Cause I don't want to miss out on that event where I, and I'm, I'm going to try to at least get one of every EV evolution or yeah. sorry, EV with a different terraform. And that way I can evolve them to different EVs. And then that way they have different terraforms that would counteract their weaknesses. So like, if I get a, vapor, uh, a Florian, I will make sure I want it to have the water Terra type. Yeah, completely that, switch it up. Yeah. Well, it'd be even even bigger brain to give it the grass Terra type. So then your... Uh, the water... That's what, Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I got that backwards. Sorry, yes. Do, so, like, it's more than just not very effective. Like, maybe you can get a grass move on Flareon and then get the stab for it. That'd be awesome. So, yeah, I'm like enjoying just the grinding part of it obviously you're fighting the elite four now i think you said yeah i uh 
I went ahead and lost so we could do some trades, but <laughs> I needed to level up some anyway. Like, I think my highest level is 60, and that's like the average level of all of their capstone Pokemon. So I just really? need to level the rest of my team and kind of kind of get it up to snuff. So have, have you done even the Titans, Starbase? Like, how far are you in those? I've done all the Titans, all the Star Bases, and all the uh, eight gems. I just gotta beat the Elite Four, and there's a couple of bosses that I need to do that I won't spoil for you. And then apparently there's a whole other section of the game which uh, Nick and Austin are on, and uh, I'm excited to get to that after I thought I was almost done, but. See, I bought part of the reason I bought Scarlet was one to play through it while all of you guys were playing through it, and two, I'm really excited for WoW Dragonflight, and I needed something to kind of like take my mind off of that, other than just sitting around waiting for it. Yeah, and that comes out Monday, so <laughs> so you're pretty I need much to hurry up and finish Pokemon. December first through fourth um, is the first Charge Art event. Just let you know that. So hop back on, try to get your, your Charizards. Charizard? Hell yeah. yeah. It's going to be a Terra event. Um, and then Charizard will disappear, I think, come back December 17th through 19th, I think it is. It's in the, if you go to the uh, Poke Portal and go into the Terra raids, you'll see it all there. But um, Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd like to get a hold of a Charizard. That'd be sweet. Yeah. What starter did you pick? So... I do have all three, but I am sticking with the grass type for my initial playthrough because everyone, I feel like, picked uh, the fire type. He's just so damn cute. <laughs> so I couldn't pick the fire type. I mean, I do have them. I do have I do have Quaxu as well, but I'm okay. I, this is, I think this is one of the first few times. Like, none of them really stood out to me when it comes to starters. Like, I've uh, I, I, if I go back in time and think about it, I for some reason choose Charmander over Squirtle. You know, I prefer Squirtle over Charmander. But I remember the first time I played, I picked Charmander. Um, and then I, I think I did pick. I picked Totodile. Then it was Chip Chip Charms four. Sorry, who was three? Uh, Torchic. 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 Mudkipper. Trico. I picked Trico. Yeah. I was a Bulbasaur for the first playthrough, Chikorita first playthrough, Trico first playthrough guy. And then I didn't play a Pokemon game until Sword. Gotcha. And then Sword, sitting here right now, I honestly couldn't tell you the name of the starter that I picked. <laughs> like, I don't think I even got eight badges in that game. Oh, wow. Like, like I was not a fan of Sword. But you are flying through this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one is... So, the problem with Sword is that it is so... They have these big, wild, open areas, and the rest of the game is so railroad and handholdy that I just felt like I was in the tutorial for my entire playthrough. Gotcha. Like I, said, I do love the, the openness of it. I think they did a really good job mapping this one out, so... I don't think I would have played as much as I have had it not been like that. Had it not been almost Breath of the Wild style. Like, once you get all, like, I think it's really important, or not really important, but you'll enjoy the game more once you start doing those Titan raids, because after each one, you get a new power for your bike. Yeah. And, and once you have all the powers, you're basically Link from Breath of the Wild. Just going wherever you want, flying, climbing. Jumping. They, there's a lot of areas you can technically cheese past without getting those uh, upgrades. Like in the starting area, there's a path on the the left of the small town, and there's a couple like areas you kind of could jump jump to if you get the timing right. Like Bitly's already pulled um, a sword or a staff out of the ground that he couldn't he shouldn't be able to get to just yet because of a particular like there's a stone bridge and you can't technically make it from the ledge to this other ledge if you tie like if you pick strip it just right and my nephew managed to get that perfect the first time and he ran across got to that sword before he had the climb ability available to him oh, that's awesome and like i think he was still like 18 level 18 that range and he jumped to an area somewhere on the left side of the starting of the academy 
that you get to um without getting the um the yada yada and because he uh the climb and because he made it to get mm-hmm. there he was able to catch level 25 pokemon in that starting area because of that that's wild because for me i felt like the abilities were like doled out to you really well because like i didn't get climb until my pokemon were already around level 40 Really, and and then once I was able to do that, like the areas that I couldn't figure out how to get to before, once I got to them, I was pretty level appropriate, and I was like, oh, okay, like this is why I couldn't get here before. Yeah, like, there's a reason that these areas are kind of like more walled off, and then there's some areas like I was just kind of zipping around. Uh, a lake at one point and I ran into like a level 50 gold duck. I'm like, fuck, excuse me? <laughs> like, I think my highest was level 30 at the time. I, I do enjoy running around areas that are like, you know, 13 to 16. All of a sudden it's like level 22. Like, I got my Surviper. Like, it's a level 22 Surviper I came across. Um, me, me and my nephew were playing in, in the area and we came across the evolved portion of the sumo style Pokemon. And it was Hariyama? like... Yeah. And I think it's what it is. And it was like level 25, I think. Or like, it was like 20 to 25, and the area was like all 13. And so he, he managed to beat it and catch it. And I was like, we already had that one, though. He's like, yeah, I know, because we did a Terra Crystal. Mm-hmm. We, we got one of those, uh, the first form from a fire Terra type, which I think was pretty cool. All right, that's a lot of Pokemon <laughs> for a yeah. Dragon Ball channel. I, I want to shift over. Um, for any of those of you who are a fan of the manga, there, yeah. it's, been, it's been a hiatus for a little bit. Um, they just completed the granola arc, which was really exciting. And I heard people like, we have someone on Discord who mentioned like, oh, I just felt like it was so long. And I'm like, there were arcs longer than the granola arc, man. But um, it's coming back. I don't think there's an actual date on when chapter 88 is coming out. But I haven't seen anything. It was explained that it's supposed to be a, a prequel. Not prequel, but it's going to take place prior to the movie. So the question is, is it going to incorporate the movie kind of like how the older movies were? Even those are those are Dragon Ball Z movies and then they just read it for Super? Or it's going to be like kind of the Broly thing where it's going to get to a certain point. All right, cool. Check the movie out. And then go to what follows the arc, which I'm excited for. Regardless if they decide to uh, caption the movie in the way it was presented to us or they redo it, I'm excited either way. Um because they're starting to incorporate Broly in those training, and the new arc is supposedly supposed to way more towards Goten and Trunks, and they're aged up finally, which I think is exciting. So hopefully we get more Goten-related things in the manga, and maybe they'll step away from Goku Vegeta. I don't think that's going to be the overall approach because they're just too big of characters, but I'm really excited for the return <laughs> of it, though. Yeah, I saw an article that was titled Dragon Ball Super says goodbye to <laughs> Goku and Vegeta. And I was like, yeah, okay. No. They'll be gone for 10 issues at the most. Yeah. And then they will show up in some capacity. It if they would make that shift, that's great. I'm excited for it. Um I know there's a whole thing is Beast mode Gohan stronger than Black uh, Frieza. I don't think so. Probably not. But and I only say that because this is. I mean, I know me and Jones used to do all these videos all the time before. Um, uh, the creators Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super kind of uh, hit us with a thing, but um. The fact that they were both at max power, uh, they were just fully healed, hundred percent, and then they have got one shot it, shot it by Frieza. And granted, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing superhero movie is supposed to be a year and a half to two years because Pan was three, Dragon Ball Super Pan is currently like a year and a half, I think, in the current manga. So it's like a year and a half later. Uh, we'll find out how where it goes. I'm just super excited for that. If you're a fan of the manga, hopefully you are too. Yeah, interesting new direction, and uh, I have faith that they're going to make it interesting. Plus, Black Frieza is just badass. <laughs> so yeah, that I guess that covers up kind of us just shooting the shit for a bit. Um, I mean, if we were more of a 
want to do more React stuff, which we don't. Of course, we'll talk about the the funness that's happening over the internet with Elon Musk or the meta or even uh, crypto. But I don't want to touch those subjects because that's not what we want to talk about. But I think it's funny. Um, Jake, anything you want to say? Uh, remember to read your cards, know your plays, and know this Thanksgiving that we here at Attack on Productions care about you. Don't don't drink and drive. Almost every city has a function where you can call and get a sober ride home. Google that before you go out this holiday season. Thank you. Fluff out.